Martin and Roman's Sunday best. Yes, we are here with guests, gossip and games to keep you entertained over your bank holiday Sunday. Now with us today, we've got one of Britain's most popular radio DJs. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Bro, it's not you I'm talking about. You Melvin said, Odoom. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fair enough. That's yeah. fine, that's fine. All right, cheers. I see how this is going to go. Uh, yep. Right now, she became famous as a Saturday and she's going to brighten up our Sunday. It's the fabulous Una Healy. <laughs> and our third guest today is dropping in live from LA. It's one half of Bross. It's an old friend of mine, Luke Goss. Yes. Uh, now, if you've joined us before, you'll know that we also have access to the elusive cloud providing us mm. with entertainment throughout the show. See the swirling clouds above our head. Uh, I do like to get things started though. Melvin and Nula, you'll like this. It's a musical question to start the show. Nice. Because music in that right. makes sense, doesn't it? So um, I usually do, uh, what was number one on this day, back in, let's say, 1987? Una, I'll come to you first. Okay. 1987. Just think about where you were. Where was That's I? What, I what was going on? I believe um, you were six. What? How old? Oh, were it's you? about six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah five you or six. Were, so you were at nursery. Um, I gotta think what would have been. Um, I'm just gonna say like Kylie Minogue or something. Kylie Minogue. Good call. The, like the locomotion or something. That's, that's a good. good that's that's yeah. not a bad <laughs> call. <laughs> Mel. Uh, so I would have been seven. Um, I'm gonna go for Abba. Abba. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, quite like that. Okay. All right, Dad. Uh, you know, do you know what? Usually I'm pretty good at this. Yeah. Uh, this time. I don't have a clue. I'm just going to have a wild guess with. Yeah, I think it's got to be a Madonna song. Oh, like, maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. That's a good Pre shout, song. definitely. All right, all right, okay, well, listen. I can tell you that it's actually Rick oh, Astley. Now we're going to give you one. Oh, Take a listen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so weirdly, this became massively popular once again because people were sending it to each other, uh, basically pranking each other uh, because. You just saw Rick Astley and you got Rick rolled. Well, oh. they, they sent you a link. <laughs> People sent you a link and yeah. told you to open it because it was urgent. Yeah. Which you should never do, no. right? Yeah. You should never do that. Yeah, exactly. And it, and it took you to the video. Yeah, but it was a decent prank at the time. I mean, listen, I mean, those, those types of things, they're fun. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, being, being in the band, there must have been pranks non-stop. Sure. Oh, there was always little pranks going on, but like, if I was to think of a prank that happened to me as a, like, going back to my childhood, maybe actually in the 80s, okay. um, I've got like a huge phobia, arachnophobia of spiders, right, can't yeah. stand them. And one of my cousins, like, he knew this and he was loved spiders, he used to always have like a little pet one, like mm. in a jar. Like that one there. Yeah. Oh! oh! <laughs> Listen, you're used to them yeah, now, yeah, you yeah. know all about it. Like, <laughs> no, listen, that's how scared I am. Yeah. When you said that, like... And he had like this, he found the biggest one that he could. Yeah. And like, I used to go on holidays and stay with him. And while I was asleep, he got like the spider out and he put, put it on my face. So it was like, asleep, on your and face? I, and I could feel this little thing wow. and I woke up to it. And I still have nightmares now. Anytime like a little hair goes up from his, I, I literally wake up screaming about the spiders. So, <laughs> so I mean, but that was his answer. prank to me. But uh, yeah, it's lived with me forever. And now I've like, I'm literally arachnophobic. But yeah. well, that, I'm a celebrity. That's a no though. Can you, can you imagine me there? Well, I would, like, he, no one would sleep because I'd be all night going, ah! <laughs> 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 what animal is that? Yeah. No, with, with Ricky and Charlie, you must have had so many going on. I've been pranked like a million times. When I used to be at uni with Ricky, um, he once kind of got into my room, like late at night, yeah. I turned off all the lights, I went upstairs and he was wearing like a scream mask oh. on, which was like glowing oh in the dark. God. And I was literally screaming on the floor. And he was like, <laughs> You know when someone knows they've taken it a little bit too far? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, it's just me. And he still had the mask on, so I was like, this yeah. guy yeah. is it's kind of like saying, me. calm down. Um, now, listen, uh, he proved he can move on Strictly Come Dancing, but now he's putting his singing voice to the test in Celebrity Karaoke Club on ITV2, and he's doing it with me. Melvin, so good to have you here. You oh, too, uh, I can't wait to see that show. It's, really it's looking a lot forward of fun. It. It's so much fun. Um, Obviously, we can't say too much yeah. uh, about it, but there's so many great characters on there, like Joel, yeah. Scarlett Moffat, uh, and we just have a great time. There's like, the thing is, you don't have to be a good singer. Yeah. You just have to perform and have a great time. And enjoy well, copious amounts of drinks. Ro came back, I saw him, you know, I saw him that evening, he came back and he was raving about it. He said, what a great time he had. But Mel, you, you've recently, you've gone from um, Kiss Breakfast Time, yeah. right, 
and over to late night Radio One. Yeah. Uh, well, what's that change been like? Because that's quite drastic, isn't it? It's completely like the polar opposite. Obviously, mm. went from doing like early morning breakfast like Rome yeah. to doing late nights, but I'm loving it. The lay-ins are yeah. amazing at the moment. So yeah. it's a great time. We get to play loads of good music as well. Well, you get to play music that you like as well, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Introducing lots of new bands. Yeah, we had a guy on the show the other day called Shay Lingo who signed to Idris Elba's label, actually. Yeah. And he's just... It's, great lyricist and we get to break loads of new acts and play yeah. big people like Beyonce so we're having a great time over there. Well I'll tell you why I was going to say that because Una's got this brilliant new track out. Okay. Probably yeah. one of the best songs that we have ever had on this show. And you're not biased at all? No, no I'm not biased at all. <laughs> right and I'm just saying I would like it Maybe, if I get you one, you could play it for me. Yeah, make it happen. Well, I, I'm not sure if the genre now would be... It's not R&B and hip-hop. We could do like an R&B hip-hop, you know, Do mashup. a little remix. Yeah, do a remix. I, th I think that'd be really we cool. We could spit some bars can over Can you it? mix um, R&B and that with hip-hop with country music, though? Ah, oh, um... Mm. That's oh, interesting. Oh, that's a tough one now. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, it can work. It can go. work. If we can yeah. get him on the hook, yeah. let's yes. do it. That's exactly. really interesting. All I'm going to say is just, just be warned, because... My sister was basically involved in the writing in this song, so my dad was the song on you for the whole time. <laughs> I've already told him. I've already told him. No chance. But just, just, just no chance in trying to bribe me. So it's just like. Well, I love you guys, so we can do something. Yeah, sure. no, my daughter co-wrote the song, didn't she? She did, yeah. So which um, I'm really proud of. Yeah, my new single is called "Until You." Yeah. Um, it was co-written with your lovely daughter and sister yeah. Harley Moon um, and Fred Abbott, and we actually wrote it pre-lockdown, actually a couple of years ago. Um, on Blue Monday, you know it's meant to be the most depressing yeah. Monday of yeah. the year, but we came out with a, a cracker at the end of yeah. it. You know, it was, it was like it was a really horrible day. I remember it was lash and rain. I actually remember Harley Moon turning up and she had these really cool. She was dressed for Nashville, like she was there, like she had the, <laughs> yeah. the cowboy boots on, she had the hat. She was like, yeah, she was in her like it's such a frame of mind to write country songs. Like that's what she like loves and adores. And we just, you, you know, what you have to click you as well because when you're someone. writing a song, you're, you're yeah. kind of telling how you feel to strangers, oh, basically. You're, you know, and um, and she played little idea on the guitar and I was going oh that's amazing so we we ended up finishing the whole song and recorded it had the demo ready that day it is fantastic we're going to learn even more about that uh, in a bit as well because we've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of a special some, something coming up yeah. uh, but I mean you know you can hear it there uh, in Una but Mel how important you know for you and I guess for your family and, and your friends and your lifestyle is music how important is that I listen to music every day mm. in every room in my house there's a speaker yeah. of some kind uh, in my bathroom, in the little gym area, in the kitchen, I'm literally playing music every single day. And just getting through this whole lockdown as well has been so yeah. important for me. Uh, Mel, as well, you, you know, you did a lot of uh, time at home yeah. during uh, lockdown. I mean, I, I, I managed to, to do a couple of shows from, from my home and I, I've got to say, I, I didn't enjoy it too much. I was too lazy with it. Really? I found myself, yeah, because I was like, I'm like making a cup of tea or, or you're going to get a biscuit or whatever. And then you're like, oh, I'm actually on air. I've completely <laughs> forgotten. I mean, how did you find it? I mean, it looked like you were straight up chilling. I and took a look at this. Oh, no. <laughs> I was living my best life, like just chilling yeah. in the kitchen, in the living room. Literally, as soon as the show was done, straight to bed. There was see, no like car journey home, it was like just luxury for that's me. That's see, Mel's a pro, well, yeah. right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. Do you want to listen to that? Hold on a minute. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying, he's a pro, he's been doing it a long time. You could learn What's something. Been doing? <laughs> from him. Well, you just said, listen, you just said that you struggled doing the radio show from home, right? I'm just saying, you, sh you yeah, could learn a couple biscuits, of things. It's not because I'm not professional. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you talk to your friend Mel, though. Go on, then. Yeah, you talk. I really love Mel now. Look at you, Mel. That's a year ago. I'm just saying, go. you know. Go on, then. You, you had your big 4-0, right? Yeah. During lockdown. How was that? Um, it's kind of weird at first, but... Um, I secretly liked it, because everyone kind of makes more of an effort when you're at home. Mm. So there were more cards, there were more gifts, and we had, like, a big Zoom call, and um, my cousin and my sister said, everyone in the family has to say something nice about me which never happens. Wow. So it's like, it's just like a nice few That is few really minutes. nice. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, kind of strange not to see everyone because we had to obviously kind of quarantine for some yeah. stuff that me and Roman yeah. were doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it was amazing. Oh, sounds good. But you two have a really strange connection, apart from being radio DJs, yes. right? That your first television was in Dick and Dom in the bungalow. You guys yes. have done your research, boy. Yes. yes. Yeah. Look, now, you got a picture oh, of Roman. That's me. Oh. That's me. But how did you end up in that? 
I was I was an extra on the show. I used an to do extra. like random characters. So if you ever saw someone like dressed up as a chicken or something <laughs> random like that, it would <laughs> usually be me. <laughs> but would you have been there when I was there? That's the thing. I only found out about this about a year ago mm. because there's a super fan who uploads like stuff from the show. Yeah. And he uploaded you like on social media. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. I can't even believe this. Yeah. So I think he tagged everyone from the show yeah. and I was like, I didn't even I haven't even spoken to you about this. But yeah, that, that would have been my first ever TV gig. So you would have been there same time as me. That's, that's, yeah. amazing. that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I tell you something. That. His mum was so proud of him when he was on that show. Aww. Yeah, he had a bendy thumb and everything. He showed the world, didn't he, <laughs> <you>, Rowan? <laughs> <laughs> He did. Oh. Uh, Celebrity Karaoke Club is on ITV2 in the autumn. We're looking forward to that. It's a lot of fun. Well, it's just straight up carnage, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, now, we have been asking you to send us your Sunday selfies on social media. We love seeing what you're up to uh, whilst you're watching the show. Uh, so let's do a couple of shout outs. Uh, first up, we've got four month old Rosie enjoying the show oh. from Carlisle oh. in Cumbria. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Very good. Dad, you've got a bib like that. Um, <laughs> right. um, yeah, when I was in the band, I had one. <laughs> up, up next. <laughs> with, with the slammers. Yeah. <laughs> up next, uh, Hugo the Chihuahua watching his favourite programme from bed in London. Look at that. Oh. Look. Oh. Got the fan on, quite literally, a hot dog. <laughs> uh, oh. Cool. And um, finally, we've got Amy and a four year old son, Oscar. Loving the show Aww. in Derbyshire. Oh, beautiful. Love those two, looking so perfect. Hey, well, listen, thank you so much for sending those in. And uh, if you want a Sunday selfie shout out next week, then all you need to do is get in touch, drop us an email to sundaybest at cactustv.co.uk. Right, time for a break, but stay with us because we've got Una Healy. He's going to tell us how the Kemp family are involved in her new music. Yes, and Luke Goss is hopefully going to reveal what it's like working with Val Kilmer on their new movie. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Martin and Roman Sunday Best. We are here to keep you company every Sunday morning, and it's a special one today. It's bank holiday. I know, yeah. We've got Melvin O'Doom. Yes. And Una Healy. Yes. And shortly, Luke Goss will be virtually dropping by to talk fame, fallouts, and his brand new Hollywood movie. And we're also about to go head to head in a couple of games. But before we play, uh, we need to introduce our families of the week. Oh, now over here, I have got a beautiful family. It's the Ollie family from Chingford in London. That's Mum Sabrina, Dad Dennis, with their children, 11-year-old Jasmine, eight-year-old L'Oreal, and six-year-old Dre. How are you doing, guys? You all right? I'm great, thank you. Thank you. Now, this family are great, right? They've got a YouTube channel where the kids show all the other kids how they exercise. Wow. Which is really great because, you know, it, it gives, uh, teaches other kids how to do it, and it makes them feel better, gets them off the sofa, which is, which is wonderful, I think. Dad, was this your idea? Because you're an ex-footballer, aren't you? Yes, I am. Um, my, main, my main reason I got them into fitness was to tire them out. So, um, yeah. <laughs> as they grew up, they just loved it. And now they're taking me out and tiring me out. So, <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Well, you know, you don't just have a YouTube channel. You're also, you're all model, which is really obvious, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and yeah. with an, a name like L'Oreal, you're just waiting for that brand to come along, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know what brand it would be. No, I don't, I'm not sure what Any it would idea? be good for. Not too sure. But, I mean, how do you, how do you find the modelling? Do you enjoy the modelling? Yeah, you enjoy it, yes. <laughs> good, well, as long as you do. But, L'Oreal, you also do a little bit of gymnastics, right? Yeah. You got anything you can show us? Yeah. Go on, no, then. Go on, then. Let's have a little look. Let's see what you got. Oh, 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 oh my word! Wow, wow. that's so wonderful! Oh, wonderful. Oh. 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 With a smile as well. Love that! Love. Oh my god! Well, that listen, is... you guys are so cool. Thank you so much uh, for coming onto the show today. And on my side. Put your hands together for the Boyd family from South London. Uh, that's Mom, Selena, Dad, Darren, six-year-old Faith, and three-year-old there with the wonderful smile that is Solomon. Uh, mm. Now, over the last few months, um, Mum and daughter Faith uh, have been very busy setting up, and I love this so much, right? This is the UK's first magazine for black girls. Uh, it's called Coco Girl. 
and it has been a massive success. Okay, selling 13,000 copies today, right? And I mean, guys, tell me about this. I mean, how did this come about? Well, I was looking for a magazine which basically had like one image of somebody that looked like my daughter in it. And during Ooh. lockdown, we couldn't find anything. So wow. we decided to create our own. And um, that's how it came about. And I literally put it out on social media just to see what people thought. And it just started selling like a magazine a minute or a second, sorry. It, that <laughs> is unbelievable. As you said there, they were selling out so fast. But the photos in it are so good. And I, I'm not quite sure how you've been able to put this all together. I mean, during lockdown, I mean, who took all the photographs in there? Well, some of them were taken by Daddy. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I bet yeah, he yeah. hasn't stopped you hearing the last of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Um, now, I, I've got to ask, <laughs> how, how often... There you go, Solomon just mugged you off, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> He's like in time bomb once. <laughs> 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 I love that. <laughs> um, uh, good man. Right, guys, thank you so much for being here as well. And it is game yeah. time. But as always, we need an adjudicator to decide the winner. So let's welcome a brand new judge to the show. Put your hands together for Granny Annie. <laughs> yes, now Annie lives in Gillingham, Dorset, uh, with her dog Betty, who's a rescued Shih Tzu. And during lockdown, Annie came up with a story to help ease her grandchildren's anxiety. A story called Button Cottage Lockdown, which is now actually being published. Uh, Annie, how did this all come about? Um, it, it really came about because I had a granddaughter, or I have a granddaughter, who was struggling a little bit during lockdown. Her problem was going to bed at night and sleeping. I decided that we would work through the alphabet from A to Z. But every night she had to think of a word, but it had to be a happy word. Oh. So, Batten Cottage Lockdown is a story composed of the 26 happy words into sentences and paragraphs oh. that we actually came up with during lockdown. Oh, well, listen, Annie, that is absolutely fantastic. Great story, and thank you for coming on the show today and helping out with some of the games. Yes, okay. And I believe it is game time, and we are going to play a game called... Lyric Maestro. Now, Granny Annie has a series of song lyrics that she's going to read out, and we have to name that song. Simple as that. Una and the Boyd family, you're with Roman. Mel, and the Ollies, you're with, with me, I'm afraid. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. Hey, well, listen, each family has made their own buzzer. Uh, Boyd family, let's hear your buzzer, please. <laughs> very good, very, very good. good. And the Ollies, can I hear your buzzer? Oh, oh now that's a good one. Well done. Okay. Do you want to uh, tell them how it works? Yeah, okay. Buzz in with your answers as quick as you can. Granny Annie, are you ready? I am. Let's go. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. I know this you. one, guys. I know this one. I... Oh, wait, wait. Boy Family, straight in there. Boy yeah, Family, you're straight in. No, we've got it. No, no. Oh, we've got oh, to go to VAR. VAR's gone for the Boyd family, go on. Oh. I don't believe it anymore. What's the song called? I need the artist in the, in the song. Oh, 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 wait, wait. Oasis. 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 Oasis, yes. Oasis, Wonderwall, I'll give it yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Well done. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Selena, you sang it so well that I thought it's definitely we've got to give it to you. Oh, we've got to be quick. Watch it. I just enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 Right, Annie, yeah. what's our next tune, please? Okay. She says, we've got to hold on to what we've got. It doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. Oh, we've right. got each other, and that's a lot for love. Oh. We'll give it a shot. Boy family, oh, no, buzz, 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 I believe we've got one more. Annie, go for it. Staring at the blank page before you, open up the dirty window, oh. reaching for something in the Buzz. distance. So Buzz. close, Buzz. you can almost taste it. We've got, we've got this. We've got this. We've got this. Surely. Boy, this, is, this is... 
I'm going to slightly you better get this right. No, I do know. It's, it's, it's Natasha Bedingfield, unwritten. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 man. <laughs> so niche. <laughs> oh, 3 0. Oh, they were just quicker. Smashed it. Here's, here's another question. Why That's do like I know that? Oh, I don't know that. No, it's because it was the opening to the hills when I was a kid. Oh, oh yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, that's great. You used great to watch thing. that all the time. I did, yeah. yeah. All right, well, well done. <laughs> Let's get the final scores, shall we? Granny Annie, not as if we don't know, but tell us the final scores, would you? Who won, me or Roman? Roman won that. Yes, I <laughs> did. There's the shot. Yeah. Yes, I really did. Now, if your family fancies joining us on the show, we want to hear from yeah, you. Yeah, drop us an email with your name, your contact number, and why you'd like to be on the show. Yes, yeah, send your email to sundaybest at cactustv.co.uk. Um, now, Unahili, we spoke to you earlier on uh, about the brand new song, but I want to talk to you first about a certain picture. OK, which one? You've been spotted. Oh. With your former bandmates. Oh, yeah. Talk to me about this. Now, please tell me there's some form of reunion on the cards because well, you look uh, so happy. We were like, yeah, we were, it was like a oh, mini reunion. It was, obviously, there was uh, Rochelle and Vanessa weren't, they couldn't make it that day, but um, I've recently moved back to Ireland. Yeah. It's, it could be temporary, it could be permanent. I'm not really sure, but with everything that's going on, I just want to be with my family. I yeah, found lockdown quite yeah. tough as well, just being on my own with the two kids, you know. Mm. So it was so good to see the girls. Like, it's like, you know, we might see each other for like weeks or months, but then as soon as we get back together, it's like just, it's like we never parted. We're like, we know each other inside out. Like we spent so much time together, like, so like yeah. literally every day for nearly six years. So, yeah. um, I, like I miss them so much and the laughing that was done that day was amazing. Like, so yeah, hopefully well, I like, I can't speak on behalf of the other girls, but like, I would love to, as you know, remember like up the video with the colored tights. Right. I, I would love to get back into the colored tights again. And stri like, get yeah. out there again, you know? My, yeah. My See, I have that with Spando. I'd love yeah. to get back into colored tights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you have colored tights? I'm just well? saying. <laughs> I did, yeah. Let's get back to the best song that I've ever heard. Oh, oh, Una's oh what is song. song? Oh, yes. Okay. The, one of the best songs we've ever had on this show. Wow. Right? For no pressure reasons. now. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so until you, yeah. So yeah. Um, it was uh, written, as I said, on Blue Monday, and yeah. um, uh, it's a it's it's a country song. Mm. Basically, it's a country pop song, I would say. And I, I have a huge love for country music. Um, I grew up with it. My I, I come from quite a musical family as well. My my uncle is Declan Ernie, who's a very big country and Irish singer in Ireland, and has been on the road for years. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, so I grew up listening to the country music stations. I I, I also. Um, Host a show on, on Country Hits Radio now, yeah. so I love it. And I've got the the, boot, the, the cowboy boots on, the whole lot rocking it all. But um, I just love the storytelling in the song like that with country. It's like um, it's literally like a, a short story. So you have a beginning, middle, and end, and yeah. it all grows. And it's like the middle eight is usually that crescendo where you you find the answer, you know, and the, in, until you the, the good middle eight in there with that sort of conclusion, and then you you know belt it out till the end. Yeah, but you yeah. you did something on this song that that I would find so difficult. You work with my sister. <laughs> oh, she, oh, well, I tell you what, she is a pleasure to work with. She's such a lovely girl and yeah. she's really open oh. as well. And I think that's what you have to be when you're writing because you are mm. literally opening up your diary to strangers. And yeah. um, you have to spend that little bit of time just getting to know each other first. But we clicked, you know, and you click with someone and you just get on with them. And, you know, she's just a lovely girl and really talented. Like her voice is amazing too. So yeah. she, she's also on the track. You can, you can hear her, her BVs going throughout the whole thing. So, yeah, I yeah. remember when uh, she came home and she had your track in her hand and she put it on for me. And, oh. uh, and it was just lovely. You know, me and Shirley stand there like proud parents. Uh. Yeah. Oh. But <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. And the Harley, Right, has had. Uh, she's written uh, two number one songs in the UK country yes, charts yeah. in the last six weeks, and uh, let's hope it's a hat trick. Yeah, exactly. Yours. Well, you know, and I, I think it's great. It's, it's the perfect time for country music. Is really sort of mm -hmm. um, it's, it's 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 coming into its own here in the UK as well with a lot of new country acts as well, um, homegrown acts. But it's just so massive in America, country music. Like, yeah. I Huge. think it's, it's still only it's kind of it's really growing now. Um, but back in Ireland, there's country and Irish music, which is a little bit different, but it's still country. It's just real storytelling, you know. I love honest. It. It's yeah. real honest. You it's know? honest, it's pretty, and, it's great. You know, great. like I love the old guitar because, um, like, I compose a lot of my music just on the guitar, but it's always a handy one to have. Like, if you're ever at like a party or anything, everyone goes, and I got the guitar and I pull it out and then everyone get a, bit <laughs> a, a, a sing song going, you That's know? That's it, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, I've got to take a break right now, but we'll be chatting more to Una when we come back. Plus, she might give us. A little bit of a special performance of the song. Oh, you have to wait and see. Whee. Also, we're going to take a look at the TV shows we think everyone, including you, should be watching this week. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs>
about or just having a lie in bed. It's Martin and Roman Sunday Best. Yes, Melvin O'Doom and Una Healy are with us. And Luke Goss will shortly be joining us to talk about his brand new Hollywood film. Uh, before the break, we were talking to Una Healy about her brand new music and you're gonna treat us to a very short performance. I love this so much. It's a little bit of a taster. Oh, okay, it's so a teaser. Actually, a little, just a, a taste. Go on, yeah. give us a little bit of a teaser. Now, it is available to stream and download and everything, but this is just like a little acoustic, yeah. Oh. You used to play me all the music that you liked Stood in the front row and watched the shows on Friday nights I never thought I'd be the type to hear a song and cry Till you sat in the darkness watching films in black and white But you changed the channel and brought the colour to my life I never liked a romance, now I hang on every line until you, I didn't know who I was Until you, I didn't know what I'd lost Until you, I didn't know love could hurt so bad I didn't know it would break me and take everything I had Till you You can stream it now. Um, now, I I'm really hoping this is the first of many more singles. Oh, hopefully. Well, I actually, I'd like to put together an album now. Yeah. You know, of kind of similar genre, the country pop kind of thing, you know, mm. so. Uh, mate, listen, we're absolutely loving it. And that was so beautiful. Oh, thank you so thank much you. For, yeah, for, for playing today no as well. Um, now, there was one thing that caused another stir, not just you hanging out with the Saturdays girls. There was something else um, that you posted online, and it was a mystery object. Oh. Me and my dad have been trying oh. to work out what this is. <laughs> I think I think it's something you store like French cheese in, in the fridge. It could be anything really. You know, it's a lot. Of, what other suggestions do you have? Do you think? Is it? A, it's not a Parmesan grater, is it? Some you're, thinking of, you're thinking along the cheesy lines. Is it a anyway. doorstop? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to reveal what it is? Yeah, go on. So it's actually um, it's called an orcarina, and it's a, it's a wind instrument. So you actually you put all your fingers on. See the whole thing. Yeah. You put all your fingers down, and you literally can like play the whole scale, oh, and then just oh. and then you put your two thumbs underneath, and it's a it's a little Italian instrument. That's like a, a cheap kind of you know plastic version. Yeah. But they come like you can get a really nice ones, and they've got a lovely sound to them. And I believe there was like a, a movie or a, with a, a princess that used to play it. So a lot of people guessed it when they were like, oh, you're you, I can't even remember her name, but like yeah, the princess used to play the ocarina. Oh. I can't remember what her name was. I feel really bad now, but, but yeah, uh, but it's I a mean, nice little one, though. Yeah. Stuff like that. I mean, I mean, it's perfect in uh, scenarios that we've been in. You spend a lot of time at home. Being yeah. Able to learn pick new up a new instrument. Why not the ocarina? <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> I mean, talking about moving, uh, you know, back home and, and, and being there. You, you're back in Ireland now. Yeah. Um, you said it's nice to be back with your family. Yeah. It's, it's. I think it's important in times like this to be around your family. You know, mm. with with the uncertainty and everything. I just felt that if there was ever another lockdown, I, I just don't think I could do it again. Like it was just. I found it really tough. You know. Cause yeah. I was on my own with the with the two kids, and although they kept me entertained and everything, I was homeschooling them. But I was just like, I just miss like you know my my family to see them, even if it's just through the window. Yeah. You know, I yeah. So that's why I've decided to to go back. Do you know what, Erna? Thank you so much. It's been so lovely to chat to you today. Oh, you too. Thank you. Both. Um, and your new single, Until You, is out now. Um, but we're not the only ones with questions. Um, Dad, your family has a yeah, question. Yeah, Ollie family. Have you got a question for Una? You'd like to ask? We do. Did you have a secret skill when you were younger? I did. I, well, I wouldn't say it's secret now, a lot because I like to, to um, you know, I, I, I gloat on it a bit. I'm like, I was a champion swimmer when I was um, under nine. So, yeah, I was all, our, all Ireland champion. So I literally, really? I spent, yeah, so I literally spent my whole childhood in, in the swimming pool. Really? And um, I went on, I was like so determined as well. I was like, I'm going to win. I'm going to be the fastest nine year old in Ireland. And I just, trained so hard and I got there. So I do think with determination is, is very important. Like obviously you have to be kind of all right at it as well, but. That's, that's a very strange talent. So thank you for that question, Ollie family. Um, yes. And Melvin, for you, mm -hmm. the Boyd family have a question. What's your question for Melvin? The question is, have you ever interviewed a famous person and been starstruck by them? Oh, great question. Um, 
It would have to be when I met Sylvester Stallone. Oh, just because I obviously grew up watching him, seeing all these films. And when you see him in person, he's so... He's such a massive character. He's like, yeah. got, got massive muscles. And we walked into this room, and I realised the recorder that we had wasn't working, because the batteries were flat. So I said, excuse me, Mr Stallone, can I just go out and change these batteries? And he looked at me and went, amateur. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then he was like, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. And I'll give you five minutes. But he was like the nicest guy ever. But for one split second, I was really scared. Yeah. yeah. Really crushed. Crushed. I'm yeah. surprised you can understand what he's saying, if I'm totally honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> He probably just said, he probably just said, he probably got, he probably said, I've got some double A's. But he just said, amateur. <laughs> the thing is, you wouldn't say that to his face, right? No! <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. I will see him from a far yeah. room on the other end of the corner. Oh, yeah. You're not going to argue with Rambo, are you? No, exactly. 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 No, definitely and Rocky. not. Oh, well, listen, uh, that is a lot of fun. And if you're wondering uh, what to do with the rest of your bank holiday weekend, then we have some great TV recommendations just for you in our best picks. So let's start out with one of the best entertainment shows to hit our screens this year. I'm talking about The Masked Singer. It's now streaming on BritBox, presented by the colourful suit-wearing man that is Joel Domit, Probably the best looking presenter that I yeah, think we is. have in Britain, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, listen, The Mars Singer sees 12 famous contestants battle it out in a singing competition where their identity is kept hidden until they're eliminated. Watch this. No hopes, just lies, and you're taught to cry in your pillow. But I survive. Tell you what, that is a wonderful show. You enjoy that? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I thought she was. Nicola was amazing. She was so good. Her yeah, voice absolutely. Amazing. I've got one for you to watch. This is for the whole family. This is Rising Phoenix. Now, have you seen this? I, I haven't, but you've been banging on about it's it. It's on Netflix, right? right? It's all about the Paralympic Games. Okay. And it's where it started, and now it's like the third biggest sporting event in the world. Yeah. Right? It's amazing. And I think what I really love about this Paralympic Games is the way that it's changed the world's opinion on um, disabled athletes. Mm. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Now, if you get a chance, I know I will be going down the other end of the house, away from my wife this <laughs> afternoon, and watching the whole thing in one, because yeah. it's a real binge. Yeah. Now, if you watch this show before, you know that with recommendations, I love cartoons. So this one is for the kids. Phineas and Ferb, Disney Plus, a brand new film based on the much loved Disney Channel cartoon series, Phineas and Ferb. But in this film, Phineas and Ferb travel across the galaxy to rescue their older sister, Candace, who has been abducted by aliens and has found Utopia in a far off planet free from her pesky little brothers. Just play the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she going? Candace got abducted by aliens and taken to another planet. When we step through this portal, we're gonna be on an alien planet. Hello, and welcome, aliens. Ah! Giant robots, quick, get that view button. Oh, that's just Norm, he's, he's usually harmless. If we're going to rescue Candace, we need to build a spaceship. My galactic travel -inator. You mean, like a spaceship? But it's in the NATO. There's a difference. It's branding. Oh, Leave me alone. Oh, good. Man, I can see that's right up your street, isn't 100%. it? 100%. I can see that. Melvin? Yep. Any recommendations? Um, at the moment, I'm watching, or just finished watching, an action drama called Hannah, mm. which oh, yeah. is on Amazon Prime, which is based on the film Hannah, yes. which starred, I think, Saoirse Ronan and Eric Banner. So it's, uh, it's about like a child mm. assassin. And she kind of gets hidden away into a forest, then she has to battle this agency. It's really, really cool. Just random as hell, and loads of action. <laughs> yeah. It's just a great storyline and some great characters in it as well. Uh, and what about you? Well, I, I think a lot of you have probably seen this because like, during lockdown, it was probably one of the most watched shows, Normal People. I haven't seen it. Have you not? I haven't seen it. 
haven't seen it. You're in for a treat. It. So, like, I binged watch it, basically. I just yeah. loved it so much. And, and not just because it's based in Ireland. Yeah. It's based in Sligo. And it's just all about... The, um, the, it just goes through the whole relationship of two teenagers that meet and fall in love. And, obviously, it's, it's quite intimate in a lot of it as well. But all age groups watch this and enjoy it because it's, mm. it's more like the, the atmosphere and the tension and the acting is just outstanding from both the characters in it. Yeah. Um, and it's just a beautiful love story, really. But it's just... Oh, it's so good. The reviews are insane, so make sure you check that one out. Yeah. Guys, thanks for your recommendations this week. Mm -hmm. um, it is time to take a break, but coming up, Luke Goss is virtually dropping in to tell us about his brand new action movie and if he'll be making a musical comeback. You'll find out in a few minutes. See you then. <laughs> Roman Sunday best. Mel Vino, Doom and Una Healy have been here all morning with us. Yeah, but now it's time to welcome our final guest of the day, having been in one of the most screened at bands of all time. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I just want you to imagine something, okay? So just really think about this. It's the 80s. You're thinking yeah. of one band in particular. Mm. They've got fantastic <laughs> outfits. The best songs in the planet. Brothers! in a band <laughs> people that we just love and adore in this country and people that i just have a real connection with oh. there's luke goss oh. <laughs> <laughs> So he's decided to follow his amazing music career with a hugely successful acting career and as if that wasn't enough already he's also producing it on his latest movie Pay Dirt. Uh, Luke welcome to the show thank you so much for chatting mate. I was slightly worried about this because I was slightly worried that it was just going to become Martin and Luke chat for three hours. No listen well, Luke first of all big hello <laughs> to you man because we haven't seen each other since we were on the set of The Loss Adjuster just before lockdown that we shot that movie, remember? And I, we passed yeah, each other on the corridor. The table, wasn't it? <laughs> That's it, yeah, we passed <laughs> each other on the corridor once, I think, that was it, which was a real shame. But uh, your new movie, Pay Dirt, tell us about that. Before I get there, I just want to say truthfully, that introduction, I'm thinking, oh, he's clearly very proud of his father. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He sells he was, it he well. Giving your, completely giving your resume right there, bro. Yeah, yeah he sells <laughs> it well, you know what it is. I brought him up too well. Yeah. Yeah. You're a rock star and you're a movie star. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's it. So, Luke, so, so <laughs> Peter, can you just say that, that again? Make sure you heard. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it. You're a rock star and a movie star. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, Luke, talk about your movie. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, it's a movie I made with my buddies. And I, don't, you'll, I think you, you'll understand this, Martin, clearly. But it's, when you make movies, we, didn't, we said, let's not get paid. Let's get on set. We've got a three week window. It's a fun, giggly story. It's goofy, goofy. And we're, we're a bunch of filmmakers that have made out of over 70 myself, Christian, a dear friend and the director. He said, look, let's just get this done. You're also starring alongside Val Kilmer. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say, it's the third time I've worked with him. And then, there's, you know, it, it, within celebrity, especially, there's this evolution of knowing each other. And this time he shows up on the golf cart. I've been doing a scene already and open arms. We must have hugged without exaggerating for 30 seconds. Just such happiness. We're like, wow, it's Who amazing, let go man. first? Uh, I, think it, we, we, I think the first AD said, you know, guys, let go of each other. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, it looked like you had a lot of fun. We've got a little bit of a clip. Let's take a look. And there he is. Look at you slip. Yeah, it looks that way. So this is where you've been hiding, in plain sight? Well, I've been where I've been, Sheriff. Not been hiding. Right. And all this ain't for the Sinaloa cartel. Yeah, me and El are cool. But this ain't him. It ain't me either. Oh man, listen, that looks fantastic. I mean, it, it, it looks great and I'm sure that'll be wicked. And I, I, I want to bring it up now because I know that if I don't, then my dad's going to try and crowbar Spandau Ballet into some form of this conversation. <laughs> um, and I don't want to spark too much rivalry. I don't want to spark too much rivalry because, you know, listen, at the end of the day, Bros, it was Bros mania. We all saw the documentary. It was can insane. I, can I say one thing? I've got, to, I've got to interrupt here, brother. I remember sitting on a bus and seeing your dad and, his, and a couple of his buddies who were sort of kind of superstars around the whole entire world at that time 
and I wasn't known. And all I remember thinking, oh my God, is Martin Kemp. Yeah. You know, I just freaked out. Like, it's a true, well, I'll, true I'll story. Take, I'll take and you go past, you go past the Royal Albert Hall, and I remember it, and I was like, this bloody Spandau oh. Ballet. Oh. Well, listen, Luke, I'll tell you something else. I remember the time, you know, all bands realise when it comes to an end, don't you? Remember the time we used to rehearse in that um, place called No Miss down in Shepherd's Bush. Yeah. And we Simon always used Beckett, to go down, yeah. Spandau used to rehearse down there. On outside, there always used to be like 10 or 12 kids, you know, hanging out outside waiting for autographs. And so one day we turn up and look at, we're just about to leave and there's about a thousand kids outside. So we call us the extra security guards down, say come down, sort it out. They all come down, wait an hour before we leave. And as we go out the door, nobody takes a blind bit of notice because they're all waiting for Bross to be in the room next door. Okay, well, we've, got, we've actually got a picture of, um, of the Bross, Brossettes, they were called. Oh. Brossettes, oh. take a look. I mean, that is, I mean, oh. I used to have a Bross oh. that, that is carnage. That is carnage. Um, I've, I've got to ask, I mean, any more plans uh, for brand new music from Bross? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're going to, at first, we're going to release the, 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 uh, the, the victory, I guess, of the documentary was the concert. And we always wanted to isolate that. So we're going to do a backstage behind the scenes, like old school, you know, how it used to be when Spandau Ballet and Duran Duran were doing it. And um, so we wanted to do it properly like that. Uh, and uh, we're going to do that first. But then we're going to, we had in the works a documentary of Matt and I going to the Caribbean doing a, lock, a lockdown <laughs> recording session for about a month making a new album. But that's good, for sure going to happen. But um, we have to wait for, for that to be possible again. But yeah, there has to be new music because otherwise the band is living in some sort of bubble of the past and we've we got to contemporize that sure hey, well, absolutely listen, thank you so much uh let's hear it for lou joining us um, and don't forget Peter is out now on dvd and digital platforms okay it's time for our final game called odd one out now our guests are going to try and deceive us they'll each tell us three things that they've done but one of those things won't be true the opposite team has to work out which is the odd one out is everyone clear? Yep. yep. Great. So, Melvin, you are up first. OK. First up, number one, I had a teddy bear called John Major. <laughs> <laughs> number two, I was purposely the first person eliminated from Strictly because I couldn't handle the early mornings. Number three, I once messed up an interview with Jamie Foxx because I forgot to press record. Oh, I hope that's not that one. Well, <laughs> I, I would... Where, so, what, where were you in being Jamie Foxx? Uh, Jamie Foxx was a junket in okay. central London. OK, so that's when you're in the And if that was true, you probably never got sent back again. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but at the same time, mm. earlier on, he told us that he didn't have the batteries for Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're not doing yourself much um, good. No, no, basically. Uh, you called me not yeah. a pro. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I'd say you're, you're well used to the early mornings doing a, a, from doing the, the um, breakfast, breakfast show. show so yep. um, I don't believe that. Well, strictly yeah, being. so I think... Uh, yeah, because I believe the John, John Major thing. John, Who John, named it John Major? Did you? I named it it's John Major. Got, yeah. You named it John Major. And yeah. if you were around then, he would have been the Prime Minister back then, wouldn't he? I, I think that's true. true yeah, we're going to say that the Strictly thing is a lie. You guys happy with that? Final answer, everyone? Yeah, final answer. Correct. Yeah! yeah. 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 Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Uh, go so okay. you've got three. So you tell my dad and Melvin and they okay, so two are, two are true. Well, we've got to pick out the lie, right? And, yeah, so first of all, now these I'm going to be very convincing. Um, so back when I was a child, we used to have like a, a glass house out the back of, of the house. Mm -hmm. And a gorgeous little blackbird, he, he got in there and I tried to help him escape. So I went in and I was running around trying to get coax him out and he was so scared um, he literally dropped one right into my mouth. <laughs> wow. And it's literally like and it went <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, okay. so, yeah. so, that, so oh there you go. Um, and then um, so obviously I love my music and I used to be in a, a grunge band and um, we were called Mosh. And um, I actually used to love like crowd surfing, so I'd often like jump out and like you know. Like so that. So it's back in the day. Okay. Um, I actually dyed my hair green at one point for that. Um, and then also as a child, God, come back. it's like as if I've no talents anymore. Though the, I liked my, I lived my life when I was a child. Yeah. It seems. Um, but um, I was a great handwriter, and I won a handwriting competition. I can't. They all sound convincing. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah. Even I'm even, but even now I'm curious as to the handwriting thing. Sorry, I'm not even on your team. Can I see the handwriting? Oh, you want to see the handwriting? Okay. Yeah. Right. I feel like there was now, a lot of detail on. Do you ever notice though how the the um, 
the, the hand, your handwriting changes as you get like as you change yeah. you know it's like if you, I look back on like when I was younger it's not the same now but I'll I'll try and do something good now here let's see okay so a handwriting competition my handwriting is the same as a five-year-old oh can you see very okay. good very nice yeah it's nice, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. see I, nice. I quite believe the first two because you, you said that the bird pooed in your mouth and then the second one your hair turned green so <laughs> the two kind of match <laughs> so i can see oh. that yeah i'm with you there and the handwriting no the handwriting looks real beautiful. beautiful what's wrong with the handwriting no the handwriting's good, good. Okay. It, it was different is it good then. enough to win a competition mm. It was different. I think back so. Then. I would say I think the grunge one can't be real. The grunge one. Yeah. Yeah. You don't I think, think you're you can't too see sweet me to be like, and it's called Mosh. Oh, listen, yeah, you haven't seen nothing yet. Oh, oh really? Oh. Hello. Oh. All right. <laughs> so let's take a guess. Let's go with that. Yeah, should we go with that? Yeah. Oh. All right. Yeah. Grunge one. So, one's so fake. Mosh didn't happen. You're right. Oh. Oh. There we go. There we go. That's yeah. it. So it's over to you, Granny Annie. Look, we know that game is a draw, but who won overall? Martin. Hey. Hey. So listen, that's your lot for today. But if you fancy watching us all over again or you missed any of the show, no, you no, can no, catch no, up stop, now stop, on stop, the ITV stop, stop, stop. hub. We won the first game. Yeah. We won we the first game them, and we drew the second game. Who won overall? Us. Martin's team won overall. No, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey, listen, thanks so much to our guests, Granny Annie, I think, uh, Una Healy and the Ollie family. Yeah. And thanks also to Melvin O'Doom, the Boyd family. Yeah. Great to have you here with us. Yeah, we'll be back next week with hopefully a less biased granny on Sunday uh, with Billy Ocean as one of our guests as well and loads more. Thanks so much for spending your morning with us. We will see you next weekend. Have a fantastic bank holiday. Yeah. Yeah.